Hi everyone, and welcome to a video about Avatar The Last Airbender, the movie. Now I want to start this video by apologizing to anyone who made the conscious and smart decision to permanently erase this film from their memories. I'm deeply sorry if I've just reminded you of its existence. No words can make up for what I've done, but You've started watching the video, so you might as well watch it the entire way through. Because not too long ago, I did a video saying Percy Jackson was the worst book-to-movie adaptation of all time, and... Well, you know, it was eight months ago now, so... Maybe too long ago, I don't know where these eight months went, but all the comments were flooded with people saying, Well, you clearly haven't seen the last Airbender movie, Seamus, it's way worse, and... I mean, you're right, at the time, I hadn't seen it, because... I actually valued my time back then, but... Here we are, eight months later, and also, you've missed the point. What book is Avatar The Last Airbender based on? There is no Avatar The Last Airbender book, to my knowledge. And therefore, it doesn't qualify for the title of worst book to movie adaptation of all time, which is okay. It has its own title. Worst movie of all time. Okay, it probably isn't the worst movie of all time, but the worst movie of all time that cost hundred. $50 million to make, like, yeah, this movie cost that much and somehow still managed to feel like a bad fan film. I kind of feel bad, but I genuinely think I could animate better looking water than this, and this video does not have an $150 million budget. Not even close to that, actually, but you know what? Oh my god, would you look at that? It's a shark! Which reminds me of Surfshark, today's sponsor. Now, if you don't already know, Surfshark is a virtual private network that isn't just extremely easy to use as in one click and you're connected, but it also guarantees your instant online safety on an unlimited number of devices by encrypting your personal information and sending you alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised using their hack lock system. And of course, you already know, I'm just gonna get straight in with their best feature, being able to change your location and access content from other countries that aren't necessarily available on yours through streaming services. Particularly if you're not in the US, you can access the US Netflix, which has all sorts of content exclusively available over there. Or if you're in America, you might find that we here in the UK have some content that you don't have too. I don't know, like the US Office, Friends, or this entire library of more adulty shows on Disney Plus's star. And as always, this isn't just some US UK exclusive thing, it just so happens to be that's where most of my audience is, but I've actually heard from people who live outside of those countries about how useful VPNs are because of how much content they're deprived of, so if you're not in the US and UK, even more so, you can check it out in the description down below and use my code GORMAN, G-O-R-M-A-N, for a massive 83% off, plus an extra three months for free and a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's literally no risk. Make sure to check it out and let's get into this not very good film. I'm trying not to be too mean, you know, it's good vibes 2021, nothing but sunshines, rainbows and smiles over here, but... Also, from the first minute, this film had lost me. I wish I could say I could look past the opening 60 seconds of scrolling text slash narration. I mean, most films usually just do one if they need to give you a bit of context before the film, but I guess you wanted to start a trend of doing both, but like, I can read without needing it to be read out to me at an excruciatingly slow Pace. That's what it felt like having to listen to it, and maybe they were just trying to change the game, but I'm here from the future to tell you I have watched a lot of films that have come out since this film, and I, not one of them did, did that. So this movie tries to follow the story of Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1, and if you do a bit of maths, you can very quickly work out where it started to go wrong. You know, you've got 20 episodes of which all are about 20 to 25 minutes long. So if you average that out, then you kind of carry over the zero. 10 hours. They had 10 hours of content and they condensed it into an hour and 42 minute long film. And when you take away the credits and the titles at the start, you're basically condensing it to an hour and a half. And I'm really starting to notice this being a correlation when it comes to bad adaptations, actually. Like, it's almost as if these films were destined to fail because of some non-creative executives wanting them shrunk down to a feature-length movie when realistically shortening the story that much completely ruins them and making the job of the actual creatives impossible. Yes, you have my sympathy, M. Night Shyamalan. Are you happy? The film still wasn't great, though. Anyway, as you'll know if you've seen the TV show, which... 
If you haven't, why? Like, this is a rare, universally loved show. What have you been doing? I was in that position, like, four years ago, and it was a mistake. And you are currently making a mistake. If you haven't seen the TV show, you are almost certainly going to like it. And the first episode consists of Katara and Sokka kind of just living out life in a war-ridden southern water tribe, which in the film comes with a side dish of a really bad green screen effect. Couldn't you have filmed this in, like, a snowy place? This film has an $150 million budget, of which a lot of it takes place on a snowy terrain, and apparently they filmed some of it in Greenland, which raises an even more complicated question of how does it look this bad? But yeah, they find the Avatar, a signal beam shoots up, alerting Zuko to this, and that's the first episode. Three minutes. It's been three minutes if you ignore all the company logos and the scrolling text at the start. Some people might argue that the first episode in any TV series is the most important because it gives you that context, sets the tone for what you're getting into. And if you want to adapt this, you still want to keep quite a lot of that first episode in there just to really make sure you've set the groundwork. But no, three minutes. Now, if that kind of gives you a general idea of what this is like, I'm not planning on going through the entire movie and saying, well, this is just a condensed and bad version of the show because... Well, that would be redundant, and, well, to be honest, this whole video is probably redundant, as there are countless videos that have probably already said any points I can make about this film here on YouTube. The fact of the matter is, I haven't made those points yet, so let's talk about all the characters and why they're all worse. Starting with Zuko, who looks awful. Obviously, there's a clear and defining feature about Zuko's character in this show. You know how his dad attacked him and banished him, leaving a big red scar on his face? Which throughout the show is beautifully used to symbolise that Zuko has good in him. There are two sides to his coin well you know face particularly in season three when he actually switches sides in a perfectly executed character arc a lot of the shots of him specifically focus on either side of his face visually demonstrating how he's conflicted this scar being a constant reminder of his roots with the fire nation but this other side being pure with the ability to do the right thing in the movie we don't get any shots like that which is fine it was something that worked particularly well with the stylistic choice of the show but it's that his scar as a whole isn't even that bad. Like, it's there. You can see he has a scar on his face, but it's hardly even noticeable unless the camera's right up in his face. This is supposed to be his defining feature, and it's just there. So yeah, Zuko's character, infinitely worse. And I feel like I could have lived with that. Zuko season one, he's okay, right? Zuko season three, different gravy. And again, I could have lived with it. But Iroh, you ruined Iroh, sorry. Eero. Oh my god. Now I'm mad. Apparently, in this version, Eero is on Zuko's side and also wants to capture the Avatar to return back to the Fire Nation? What? You know, rather than being Zuko's guide, teaching him that there's more to life than what he's been brought up thinking in the Fire Nation and really just wanting to settle down, living a peaceful life, and guys? I don't think we see him drinking tea once. And also, because they kidnap Aang immediately after his awakening and arrival at the Southern Water Tribe means Katara and Sokka make the life-changing decision to go help him find his home and train him up to be the Avatar to take on the Fire Nation before they've even had a proper conversation with him. Like, we need more development into their relationship than just we're going on an adventure together because we're the main characters and that's what has to happen for the story to go forward. However, even though I do stand by the fact all the characters are infinitely worse, the CGI Appa doesn't look that bad for the most part, as it should in a film that cost $150 million. I'm not letting you forget how much you spent on this. I know you made profit, but I still don't know what the money went towards. And I know this is a really niche complaint, but because they tried to squeeze so much content into a short period of time, they end up kind of having to just explain what's happening rather than show it happening. You know the number one rule, show don't tell? They're not even trying to hide their breaking it. Like, we get this wonderful bit of 12 second filler narration from Katara while they're flying to the Southern Air Temple, covering the conversation they had with Aang, where he fills them in about how he used to live in this air temple with the air nomads, but ran away during a storm and got frozen for a hundred years, and I can't stand when a movie or a show uses narration like this. I like narration when it's used effectively and adds a layer to the story, like How I Met Your Mother. The bits of narration at the end of episodes are the best parts, but if you're just using narration to tell us you had a conversation with someone off screen that you could have very easily had on screen, what's the point? I mean, congrats on saving 30 seconds and 
at the very most a couple of million by not showing the scene of Anne getting frozen. But also, I'm sorry, surely you could have afforded to do this? Like, this is a huge budget move. There's a conspiracy out here somewhere. Where did the money go? Anyway, as the film continues to breeze through important moments in the show, Aang finds out his people are dead, gets angry, and goes into the Avatar state, or within the space of about a minute. And with that, we're on to the episode where they save the father and his son from that Fire Nation prison. Except this time with a twist, because they're not even stuck in a metal prison. It's just a regular earthy place where they could have been bending the earth around them the entire time. So obviously Aang tells them to bend the earth, you know, because they can, and they fight back. Which leads to my next major complaint. Every fight scene in this film is so poorly choreographed. Like every bending fight feels so slowly paced and I feel like half the actors don't know what they're supposed to be doing during it. And Katara and Sokka are supposed to be Fire Nation prisoners in this moment and they're just standing there like, what are we supposed to do now everyone's fighting? Only one person's allowed to fight at a time. I feel like that's the unspoken rule. Like you could have a field day just watching the extras in the background while fight scenes are going the Avatar and his friend are fighting our fellow soldiers! I guess we'll stand in the background, kind of not doing anything. Oh, and also, that was it. The Fire Nation being the intimidating big bads just run away. Like, I am really feeling the bad guys in this film. You got those two that got swindled by a kid, a cowardly army, and Fire Lord Ozai, who they're showing the face of right from the start, I guess. And you know what? Fine, I can look past that. It's a creative choice, but... Why is he even in this one? He's hardly in season one of Avatar The Last Airbender beyond a few flashback scenes and his only purpose in this film is to be a character that Zhao reports to. Either way, I'm getting distracted because it's not just this one fight scene, it's every fight scene in the film. Like after this, they kind of fly through the next 10 episodes in about two minutes with a learning how to waterbend montage to fill the runtime and get straight into the next fight scene. You know, the one where Aang gets captured by the Fire Nation leading to Zuko dressed up as the Blue Spirit coming to save him and oh my god, the amount of times they could have been stopped while they get away is like beyond words. They are excessively outnumbered and right here Aang's just standing there. What are you doing approaching him so slowly? He's a kid, you could take him. Also with Zuko here, couldn't you just swarm him? How are you getting repeatedly bested when there are so many of you? Yes, we are taking on an entire Fire Nation army. It's really helpful that 99% of them are just making the decision to do absolutely nothing and stand around in the background. Also, because Zuko's character hasn't been developed and before this moment has met Aang a grand total of wait for it one time, this reveal of him being the blue spirit doesn't work. There's been no setup for it. And can you imagine watching this for the first time? I mean, you made it more unpredictable. I'll give you that. It's not a good thing. And also, apparently in this, everyone just knows it was Zuko as well. But what I find so funny about this scene where Zhao tells the Fire Lord that Zuko broke the Avatar out is that they're not showing the Fire Lord's face. Like, they're actively trying to hide his identity. You do know it was revealed earlier in the film, right? <laughs> it's so clear that they filmed this thinking they weren't gonna reveal his face, but then they must have had a change in direction later on and reveal his face earlier, but don't have a shot of his face for this scene. And it's just, I feel a secondhand embarrassment. I keep my videos more concise than this. And I'm gonna remind you for the fourth time that my video does not have an $150 million budget. Then they skip through another five episodes. About as much of a montage this time as Zuko's cabin gets blown up in quite literally the next scene. Also in the meantime, Aang's back with Katara and Sokka who haven't been in the film since they freed that earth town and they've just arrived at the North Pole. And I was thinking, okay, they have rushed through this so much up until this point. Surely they've bought themselves enough time to do some justice to this Siege of the North storyline. But no, instead, we're just straight back in with the Katara narration. We presented ourselves to the royal court. My brother and the princess became friends right away. Yeah, just show a clip of them looking at each other. That'll be enough. That's all the development a relationship needs. And we just get some flat out pointless scenes. Like the water master thinks Aang's technique is too defensive, so tells him to attack him. So Aang picks up a lot of water and the master just looks at him like, Oh wow, you must be powerful, and that's it. He never attacks him. That's the entire scene. I do not understand what the point of it was. We already know Aang's powerful. He is the Avatar, for God's sake. And also, another just huge disappointment. One of my favorite relationships, or maybe rivalry from the show, is between Katara and Zuko, and their fight at the end of season one is one of my favorite moments in the series, because Katara holds her own against him, showing her power as a waterbender, and here, not only is it their first time meeting, they had not had as much as a conversation before this fight, and Zuko just 
wins off screen like they don't show him winning he's just propping up katara's body when they cut back and that's the entire fight i mean at least iroh gets a moment of goodness where he tries to talk zhao out of killing the moon spirit but he doesn't listen and that's when iroh gets mad and blasts fire out of his hands which i thought was something all firebenders did but uh, apparently not this feat scares the rest of the fire nation soldiers and they all start running away for what I wish I could say was for the first and last time. Because Aang creates a wave, like a really big wave, and I guess everyone had an oh wow, you must be powerful moment as the army and fleet just flee, so he doesn't even use the wave. Which, does that make this a payoff to the lesson the water master gave him earlier? Is that storytelling? I think it is, but... It's not very good storytelling. And it ends with everyone bowing down to him. He makes this motion with his hands while looking really uncomfortable. And that's it, cut to black. Or so you'd think, because they only went and teased the sequel. Oh god, I feel bad. Like, did they really think this was gonna be well received? Surely by the time it was coming out, they must have known, yeah, this isn't it. But you know what? It's Good Vibes 2021. I'm done bashing on this film. And the truth is, I have a secret. I've been leaving hints throughout this video, and I'm the Avatar. But I hear you. Seamus, you haven't shown us airbending yet, and you're right. I've been saving best till last. Watch this. Oh, do you see that? I moved some air good there. Oh, 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 oh it feels like there's a draft in here. Mm -hmm. But on a real, we've had fun today, but can you keep my abilities a secret? Because, you know, I've seen enough superhero movies to know that, like, if the world finds out about this, some big bad villain with the same powers is going to come on and try and take me down, and it just sounds like a lot of effort. You know, I just want to make YouTube videos, so... Don't tell anyone unless you want me to stop making YouTube videos. Is that cool? Okay, I'm glad we're clear here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. You can subscribe to my channel and watch another video and check out my Patreon. I almost forgot about my Patreon for a second, but you shouldn't forget about my Patreon. It's very important that you support me on there. Also, go follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I said that too late. Again, I always say that too late. This is going on too long. I've only got 20 seconds.